Dr. Collins, uh, isn't it true, I believe you updated the report in the last year, that in the last, now I believe it was decade, uh, every single drug approved by the FDA had uh, NIH uh, research support, is that correct? That is correct. That was 100% of those drugs, and that was a study done by Dr. Fred Ledley and published in the Proceedings of the National Academy. Yeah, I've got that document, and Madam Chair, without objection, I'd like to enter that into the record as well. And, and then finally, very quick, Dr. Collins, if you had 10, 20, 70 billion dollars more, literally, what would that mean as far as research, and what new areas would we be going into in a very quick amount of time? What a lovely question. Uh, you know, a lot of it would be basically that we could provide for this amazing research workforce that's out there, the opportunity to pursue all kinds of ideas that we currently can't quite get to. We're still only funding about one grant application out of five, and I know we are leaving really good science on the table when that happens. To be healthy, really, to take advantage of all that creativity, it ought to be at least one out of three. So that would be a big part of what I would do. And I would particularly focus on those early stage investigators. They're our future. They're the ones that are most vulnerable when things seem a little tight. And we'd want to be sure that they felt this experience to be something that was going to be sustainable. And particularly if they come from diverse backgrounds where we have this need, as we've been talking about in this whole hearing, to enhance the, the ability of all those different voices to come and join us uh, to make their careers out of biomedical research and for us to sustain them. That's what I'd want to do is just make sure the whole landscape is advantaged by this kind of opportunity. Thank you very much. And one of the reasons why this is the most important uh, uh, hearing, in my view, that we have is because what we do is we learn of the discoveries to cure that you are engaged in and what you're doing. What is it that we learn what your future research will, will result in, what it can do. Uh, and uh, we, we know that the resources that we provide for a specific area uh, can, uh, in fact, lead to the discovery in so many other areas. Uh, and that is all with the goal of saving lives. And as I said a few moments ago, there isn't any more important mission. I always say, I do, uh, you know, I represent, you know, a state that deals with helicopters, we deal with roads, we deal with bridges, we deal with all kinds of, of issues, but nothing is more important than the content of what um, as the subject matter of today's, uh, of today's hearing. Uh, I will again repeat the tremendous success of COVID-19, uh, the MRAN technology. Listen, this is, this is the biomedical research that you have been working on. Um, and and you never know. You can tell us better than we can tell you because we're not scientists. You never know where the years of uh, and the decades of basic research are going to take you, where the breakthroughs are going to be made. Uh, and in that context, I reiterate the importance of, of continuing to support sustained increases in funding for basic research at NIH. Um, um, none of the successes that we've discussed today would be possible without that basic research.